Y'all, this was 101 test realm is really, really heating up. They added another element into the mix. They just PvP banned one of the most important treasure cards in Wizard 101 PvP. If you hop on a test realm, you'll notice that Medusa is now PvP banned in treasure card form. And I know this doesn't seem like a crazy thing, but this is absolutely one of the biggest changes we've seen to the meta in a long time. And that is not an exaggeration. Right now, this is one of the spells that makes every single game at the beginning an absolute living nightmare. If you're on a storm, if you're on a fire, if you're on a mid, pulling this card very, very early could just mean that you've already won. Because for a lot of schools, it's as simple as setting your arch mastery pips to mid, so you basically have mid mastery, doing a Medusa, and then either you faint into a shad or you blade into a shad, and with the damage the way it is right now, that is basically the end of the game. I wanted to talk a bit exactly about my thoughts on this, on uh, just get y'all to weigh in, I guess, but I feel like this is one of the biggest, most aggressive bans I've ever Ever seen. My opinion is very different on this compared to yesterday's video. So if you didn't watch yesterday's video, you should also watch that one. But frankly, I think this is a really, really good change. And the reason I say this is because I feel like every offensive school was playing the same when you th when you think about it. They were going for a stun block a blade, an aura, and then they were threatening a Medusa if your opponent hadn't already stun blocked themselves. That's super, super linear considering we're talking about many, many different schools with many, many different strengths. This was a very invasive card. I'm gonna be honest, I feel like the Medusa meta was so crazy that people were literally basing their whole pins off of it. Like, for example, right? A death doing storm stuff, that makes sense. But most people, especially if they were on a storm, a death, a fire, they would do anything under the sun to just get more mid damage. So all their pins would be myth oriented and they would actually get like a thousand damage from the Medusa and it would basically be one of the cheesiest ways you could win as early as you could win. I feel like this was also dangerously affecting how you were supposed to build a deck because if a Medusa is easy to pull because it's a treasure card, that means that you need to have stun blocks that are easy to pull as well, which means you need to put stun blocks inside to make up for the ease at which you might get Medusa. So that created a situation where you have very limited sideboard space as is. Right now, these days, 36 is the general number that you'll expect out of sideboard. And out of those 36, you might put either like, you know, four or even five cards dedicated just for stunts, as in stun blocks and Medusa. I'm really hoping that this change slows down the meta just enough where people can put stun blocks in main deck again. And I just think that that's going to make the sideboard a lot, lot better in terms of just its ability to be used. Now, I think in talking about Medusa, it's important also to talk about the the role of stuns in Wizard 101, and I think that's really the big deal behind this ban in general. I think stuns have three major uses in PvP. If you do PvP, you probably already know what I'm about to say. You can use a cheap stun to stall around and get a shad. I think that's something that is extremely situational. Most people wouldn't even list it as a reason, but let's say that I'm one round from getting a shad. My opponent's open. I happen to have maybe like, I don't know, a fire pip or fire mastery. I can throw out a choke, and then I get my shad, and then I send the shad. The second use is to run out a round of strike. The meta has sped up so much that that one round that you don't stun lag before going into strike if your opponent doesn't stun you, will win you the game. So that's another reason why stuns can be used, right? If someone is just really just putting the, you, you know, they're, 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 they're not hitting the brakes at all. They're just trying to go into strike and kill you as soon as possible. If they're not stun blocking and you can dispel and stun, chances are you've already won right there. So it is a very good check against strike. And the third use, which I think is what Medusa was really doing, is to combo. Ideally, when you're comboing, you probably have some sort of buff already. Your opponent has maybe a weakness on you or a tower shield, you clear the weakness, you clear the tower shield, and now you have two rounds to stack even more buffs into a shad. So this third role that Medusa has in comboing, I think Myth Banshee is gonna replace it. I have a feeling that Myth Banshee is gonna be the new extremely important spell to have if you're a hard-hitting school and you do want to punish a lack of stun blocks. Unlike Medusa, you don't have two rounds to buff out of it and hit. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's only one round, and so I don't really think it's that crazy. The damage is also low enough where you're not getting damage from it by pinning the myth. So I hope they don't really pull up, but wait, there's more thing and also get Banshee out because 
I honestly think that you do need stuns in a meta this fast, especially when you choose to stun block and your opponent doesn't. That being said, now the consequences of not stun blocking, if you're not really going to strike and you play very safe, it might not matter as much. So that adds a new level of strategy that just wasn't there. For that reason alone, I hope they keep these in PvP. But honestly, I actually hope they go a step further. If you guys are unaware about how Myth Banshee is like, you know, it works, this treasure card is from a pack. That's what that symbol, like that little ghost, the, the little ghost like symbol that thing means that it's from like a halloween pack i think i think it's a halloween pack y'all can correct me if i'm wrong i'm sure someone knows the name in the comment but the key factor here is that it, that's a seasonal pack meaning if you really look at how myth banshee treasure cards work in circulation there will always be a spike around halloween and there will always be like a real dip when it's like you know like longer and longer after halloween i feel like by the time the summer hits the supply overall of myth banshees as they get used will make it so that this becomes rarer and rarer. In the past, Wizard 101 has resolved issues when it comes to rare TCs forming like some sort of like, you know, gate, you know, like it almost like a gate keeps PvP a little bit. When it comes to those types of TCs, their solution seems to be that, you know, you can put it in the arena and sell it for arena tickets. If you upgrade your PvP crafter in your guild enough, you'll also have a place where you can craft your TCs here with Azoth as well. And as you can see, these range from Rochambeau spells to auras to even utility spells like Steel Ward. I think they should seriously consider adding Myth Banshee to this, not just because, you know, like, it's like a very, very important card to have just to, like, combo with, but because it's rare and you could be at a serious disadvantage in PvP without a hit and stun that someone else might have. I think adding some sort of craftable method would also just reduce the amount to which it's pay to win. I can really see a scenario where people will just, they have a lot of empowers, they go to a discord where they can trade, they get a bunch of myth banshees. The casual player won't do that. So while I do think that the Medusa change is going to slow down the meta in meaningful ways and make schools, you know, play a little less like each other, I think that it opens a door for the next thing that fulfills the role that Medusa does to, like, take over in terms of important. And while Myth Banshee is not as powerful as Medusa, and it won't break the game the same way, in my opinion, that Medusa was, it could create a lot of accessibility issues. So I do think they should deal with that as, as easily as they can with something like a crafter, maybe something where it drops, just something that's not pay to win or seasonal. I think that would, that, that, that would work really well, specifically considering Myth Banshee, because I think that's, like, a very specific problem with that specific treasure card. I feel like compared to the other treasure cards that they PvP banned, I feel I feel like this one makes a lot of sense to me. There's a little bit more breathing room, a little bit more wiggle room. Stun blocks are still important. Stuns are still going to be important. It's just they're not going to end the game for you anymore. And I think that's something to celebrate, especially if you do PvP at all levels. At any levels, I'm sure this affects anybody. Let me know what you guys think of this change. Did you guys like how Medusa used to be, like, able to be used on every school? Do you guys like the approach that they're taking with the PvP ban? I'm sure there's a lot of opinions on this, so I look forward to reading all of y'all's comments. As always, drop a like if you enjoyed. Leave a sub if you're new. And if somebody hasn't told you're awesome today, they're doing something. I'll see y'all soon. Stay awesome. And yeah, y'all. Yeah.